Synthetic biology is not the engineering of biology with materials. This is just a, a picture from a movie that I had. I was unfortunate enough to have to watch last week. This Robocop. This is not synthetic biology. This might be considered material science, science engineering, biomolecular engineering, but this is not synthetic biology. Um, synthetic biology is not bringing up species from the past, nor is it making up new species with features of different species at a macro organism level like this. I don't think there's anybody, anybody in the world best suited at the moment to, uh, to describe what synthetic biology is to anyone. The design and construction of new biological parts, devices and systems to understand biology is one of the uh, two legs uh, in that we think of synthetic biology. And I would like to give you a quote here of Richard Feynman, who uh, was a physicist and uh, had a Nobel Prize. And he said, what I cannot create, I do not understand. So basically, he felt very strongly what uh, many scientists feel, that if you can assemble something and create it, then you will understand what it is and how it works. So you can, in your computer, easily design the genome that you want. Then you can take DNA synthesis and make the DNA. It's actually done in yeast. And then we can get this asynthetic genome. But the crucial step for this is then how do we start a new cell? And so what is being taken here is a mycoplasma genome to which we add this new mycoplasma genome. And then this is replaced, thrown out, and then we have the synthetic cell. In the present situation, we do not know what defines an organism. We do have a sum of the working parts, but we don't know how to put them together. And also synthetic biology is technology, and we'll have to see where it will go in the future. Where do you see the first commercial application of the technology? Where, where do you see the first use coming out of, <coughs> of a synthetic cell? Mm -hmm. So the first, and the first possible use or use uh, was already published. Even bacteria are victims of viruses. And a virus may have a slightly different genetic code of, from bacterium. And if, as I mentioned, a bacterium could be recoded and I could, uh, could take away the essential codon for the virus, the host E. coli wouldn't mind and knows how to get around it. But that cell would be resistant to viruses. The organism that you need to make yogurt or cheese, and if you think about how cheese is made in huge vats where milk is um, infected with lactobacillus. And it is perfectly standard that every so often 5,000 liter milk will just go sour and go because there was a virus infection. If you could, by synthetic biology, make <clears throat> a virus resistant strain, that would actually be economically very valuable. And this might motivate product development in this area. How far away are we from modifying our own selves so that we can stop aging?
I do not know the answer, but that I want to say I want to say one thing. Um, there is again strict regulations that you can go ahead and modify somatic cells, which is being done both in uh, gene transplants, etc., and even trying out in medicine. But you cannot modify your uh, germ cells. Uh, this is against any of the rules there are. Um, in terms of um, to stop aging, I certainly have not found anything for me. So maybe. No, you're doing quite well, Peter. <laughs> you're doing quite well. So it's for you. <laughs> <laughs> so we can only see and project the future based on what we know today. And I would eventually guess that in 10 years' time, Whatever predictions I or you may make now will be completely wrong. Will be completely wrong. <laughs> yeah. it happens to me like <laughs> one week ago. So. <laughs>